Aloha and welcome to the Embodied Healing Self Podcast with your host, Jen Mons. Each week, join me for soul-inspired, conscious conversations around embodied healing and awakening to your soul's purpose. Thank you for listening in. Aloha and welcome. Thank you for joining me again today. And so today our topic is the art of self-love. So I really love this topic because it's really challenging for me and for most of us. A couple of years ago, I mentioned um, in my welcome podcast that I experienced a secondary health crisis at the peak of eating clean. And as a result of that back in 2015, when I was eating super healthy, I listened to my inner guidance that said, health is not about just the food you eat. It's important to reduce stress, to have healthy relationships and healthy boundaries. And it's important to put yourself first. I had been coming out of about six years of really living in survival mode, taking care of a child that needed extra awareness and attention around her health and well-being. And there were many times where I'd forgotten to take care of myself. And I can remember one of the holistic practitioners saying to me, she'll never get better until you do. And that really stuck with me. And so many times in the women that I work with who are nourishing their families, this topic comes up especially for women and men, we both like to, in different ways, serve other people and put them first. And so I invite you to consider that for a moment. What ways in your life are you putting everything and everyone else first? Maybe it only shows up once or twice a week. Maybe this is a part of who you are. Chances are there have been times in your life where you have really decided to do this. And so I decided as a result of that experience to create and launch a new program that was going to include self-love, healthy mindset, and healthy relationships with ourselves and with food. Up until that point in time, most of my Business had been focused on a healthy physical body, reducing inflammation, detoxing the body, and feeling good in our physical body. And so this experience really set in stone the need for healthy mind, healthy heart space, and healthy relationship to ourself. Because every day we have a choice on where we're going to spend our time and attention. We have 168 hours in the week and we choose how to spend those hours. Oftentimes, we spend them with, uh, without a clear sense of purpose. We're in survival mode, responding to what life throws our way. So we're being responsive rather than proactive. A lot of times we have obligations and sometimes we commit to things that aren't in alignment with our core values because we feel like we have to do certain things. We schedule blocks of time in our calendar for priorities if we're really on top of, you know, committing to change in our life. We might be able to schedule time for the things that really matter like how to nourish ourselves, how to spend time with loved ones and you know, how to really take care of ourselves and our family. And then also we have to schedule the time for the priorities that come in our life with the work that we're doing. So one of the ways to increase your relationship with self-love is by being okay with putting yourself first. Like really being okay with knowing your self-worth and knowing That as you do this, it allows you to show up and serve those other people that you're already serving from a more grounded and nourished place, from a place of love. So rather than there being a need to serve others and take care of others, because maybe there's an unhealthy attachment to the need to be appreciated or the need to be acknowledged or 
the lack of self-worth because sometimes we can do that. We can, it's easy to put other people first than to acknowledge what our own needs are and really getting clear and present with what do I need and being okay with it. And if you're a parent listening on this podcast, teaching your children that there's definitely a fine line to walk, especially if you've got, you know, a teenager, because they seem to find it very easy to think about what their needs are, but really just reminding them that it's okay to acknowledge what it is that you need to do for yourself and communicate it clearly. Is it the right time? Is this coming from a place of love? Is this a healthy request? And just getting really clear on what it is you need. As a parent, oftentimes our children are looking at us to create those boundaries because they, if we don't help them do that, they don't know how to do it. And so that's kind of just a learning process that can also help us become aware of what it is that we actually need in our life, such as healthy boundaries. So couple of things that have really helped me with my self-love practice, and there are many, many things that, that you can do, is writing in a journal, a gratitude journal. Maybe it's daily, maybe it's weekly, and writing down maybe just one to three things that you're grateful for in that moment for that day. Gratitude is such a wonderful gift that opens up possibilities for more things to be thankful for. It's a shift in our perception in the way that we are experiencing our life, which is a choice. And it feels really good and it's really healthy. And as we have gratitude, we can acknowledge ourselves for being present and grateful for those things, which in itself is a form of self-love. Another way that I love to welcome self-love into my life is a silent meditation, prayer, or just some quiet time. And this, this only really can last a few minutes. Visualizing in your mind what it is that you desire in your life for this day. Or just allowing maybe silence Maybe the manifestation of what will naturally just come up for you. Just the presence of being with your very physical body. Another important part of creating a healthy relationship with self-love is going to be practicing forgiveness with yourself and having compassion for yourself. And for me, and probably I'm guessing most of you listening, this is been by far the most challenging and the hardest. If you're a person who is a perfectionist, you're an overachiever, or you're just really committed to just doing a really good job or at whatever it is that you do, which many of us are, chances are there's been a time in your life where you've been hard on yourself. Maybe this even shows up in your relationships with other people. Maybe you find that you start to be hard on other people. Because as I teach my girls, and we all know this, when someone is mean to you, it's not really about you. That person that's being mean is having some type of inner judgment or critic that's coming out and being projected on you. And so I invite you just to consider that, how that shows up in your life. I know for me personally, this one alone was the hardest one to break through. Because as a child, I, at some point in time, decided my role in the family was going to be a kid who got really good grades, stayed out of trouble, went to a really good college, and I was acknowledged for my high performances, and it was a way that I received love. And so I continue to believe that what I was valued for in the world was based on what I was doing. When the truth is, is the value of who we are is how we're being and who we are. So I set all these really high expectations up for myself. And then I began to do it on my children and my husband and really had to do a lot of self-work and think about like, where did this come from and what is this really about? And it was the need to have self-compassion for where I was. 
It was the willingness to let go of the expectations that I had put on myself, which were far higher than expectations other people were putting on me. I just assumed other people had expectations and my expectations were not realistic. And it always felt like I was in a place of falling short and it didn't feel good. And so I'm sure that some of you can relate to this. In fact, I know that you can because many of you have told me over the years, if you've been a client of mine, that you've been afraid to to even start a healthy program when you already don't even think you can do it because you've put the expectation on yourself that you have to do it 100% right. It's either pass or fail. When the truth is, is that any step that you take in the right direction, any step that you take with positive intention to create change for yourself, to welcome self-awareness, is a step in the right direction already. And oftentimes the first step is the hardest step. And this, I can't tell you how many times this message comes through to me on how often we keep ourselves from doing something that we know is going to serve us because we've already had it in our mind that we're going to fail or we're not going to meet the expectation because we have to do it right. We have to do it perfect. When I just really want to wear that t-shirt that says, I am perfectly imperfect. We are all perfectly imperfect. It's what makes us human. And so the minute we can welcome that self-compassion for where we are, when we can really get true with, you know, how it is that we're showing up and feeling, noticing where, it, where we're feeling it in our body and, you know, where did this come from? Why do we feel like we have to be perfect? You already are. We're allowed to make mistakes. And the more that we show up vulnerably in our mistakes, the more that it shows other people it's okay. It's a, so we don't want to say like, for example, thinking as a parent to our kids, like, oh, it's okay that, you know, you're not doing your homework and getting a bad grade. That's not what we're saying. There's definitely a balance between truth and compassion. We always want to remember that we want to have compassion, self-compassion for the experience. But the truth is, is that we do want to show up and do the work to get the results that we want. But letting go of the expectation and being and just allowing the journey to unfold, we do the work the best that we can in that moment. And then we allow the journey to unfold. So I just want to bring clarity around that because that is that is really the fine line is that balance between truth and compassion because too much compassion is enabling like oh honey it's okay if you don't do your homework and don't get a good grade well it's really not like our job is to you know create that space for making good choices and as a coach this is what I do all the time is that balance between accountability and truth and also having compassion for that person's unique individual experience. We do this in relationships. We do this in parenting. I do this as a coach. So really just allow yourself to notice the balance between that truth and compassion. Too much truth is harsh. So really acknowledging where you are. And really just trusting that you are doing the best you can in that moment. And remember, on my very, very first podcast, I shared with you that it's all in divine timing anyway. We're actually really not in total control of everything. It's, it's an illusion. So I invite you to consider that for a moment. And it's because our whole life experience is not just about us. It's, it, there's a whole, whole thing that's happening here. So when we realize that everything that we're doing is not just about us, we can humbly step back after we've created action steps and trust that we are in the right place at the right time. And one of my mentors taught me to say, because I noticed um, some that even after I had done the work through creating compassion and forgiveness about where I was in my self-love, that I still had old patterns of the way that I would say things. And so she invited me to consider when I noticed myself saying that, welcoming the words, until now, I have done this. And now I choose differently to do things this way. So I invite you to use those words and just play with them. Simple words, until now. Until now, I am an emotional eater. 
Now I choose to be empowered. It's okay to have chocolate if you're stressed, but but just knowing that you're choosing it is very different than doing it unconsciously. Do you see the difference? It's always a choice. So I'm going to invite you over the next week to consider three acts of self-love that you're willing to commit to. And as you do these acts of self-love, I invite you to be really present and notice how it feels in your body to be doing this. It could be a simple act of journaling. It could be something like getting a massage. It could be some time in silence, a walk in nature. It could be a talk with a relationship that needs a healthy boundary. But I invite you to write down three things that you're willing to do for yourself in the month of February. And I also invite you to write down three action steps that you can realistically take to reduce stress in your life. Because stress is what shows up, whether it's in the physical body, the emotional body, or the mental body. Stress and discomfort are what show up when we're not loving on ourselves. So think about that. Think about how stress shows up because a lot of times it shows up in the choices that we're making when we eat. For many people, stress either causes us to eat, overeat and binge eat, or it causes us maybe not to eat or to eat things that don't, that we know aren't good for us. Because if we're really in tune with our physical body and our connection to our healthy self, then we want to nourish ourselves. And they all kind of go hand in hand. You'll notice when one part is out of balance, then the other parts start to shift. So that's why the purpose of this podcast is to consider that all of those are very important. Nutrition, exercise, healthy relationships, healthy emotional well-being and mental well-being. All of those things, reducing stress, are important for us to live the half happy and healthy life that we want. So I invite you to share those action steps that you're willing to take to reduce stress in your life. I invite you to share those acts of self-love that you're willing to commit to, even if it's just one. Share it in our Facebook community, the Holistic Healthy Lifestyle Facebook group. Share it, send it in a message. I'd love to support you. And the truth is, is that Claiming it, putting into action, writing it down is the first step to making it happen. It is like the action step. So writing it down and then declaring it to to other people helps to hold ourselves accountable. So I invite you to do that for this week. And I look forward to meeting with you next week. Have a wonderful day. Thank you for joining me. Aloha. friends and thank you so much for joining me today and being a part of this community i know there are many other podcasts that you could be tuning into and i am deeply honored that you chose to listen in and be present with me today i love and cherish and appreciate you and i want to invite you to join our tribe and facebook group under jenmons.com forward slash connect I would also love to gift you your guide to discovering and overcoming the self-limiting beliefs standing in the way of you living in optimal health, more energy, fulfillment, and self-confidence to create an embodied, healthy, whole you. You can find this at genmons.com forward slash tribe. I also have one small request to help spread the love. In order for this podcast to show up in the feed of social media platforms of other like-minded people, we need reviews. So please head on over to genmons.com slash podcast to leave a review. You will also find other inspiring episodes on that page. 
So I personally read these reviews weekly and would love to give you a shout out and share your kind words with our listeners. You can find me on Instagram and Facebook as Jen Mons or The Holistic Coach with the W Holistic and Jen Mons, J-E-N-M-O-N-S dot com. Thank you so much and have an amazing day. Aloha.